Uh, in this segment, we will look at uh, power factor correction circuits when the input is uh, single phase AC. To set the stage uh, why we need these power factor correction circuits, uh, you know, let us look at this uh, diode rectifier circuit where the, the DC output has a large capacitor to establish this DC voltage and whatever follows is represented by this equivalent resistance and we can see that the input current is highly distorted, it's even assuming this uh, incoming voltage to be sinusoidal and uh, it has this distortion uh, which is shown over here. So we, we, this distortion is highly undesirable and uh, therefore we can design so-called power factor correction circuit. And uh, a very common topology that is used for these power factor correction circuits so that the current drawn here is uh, uh, basically sinusoidal is this uh, boost topology over here. So you can appreciate that this is, uh, if you think of a DC voltage which does not change in polarity uh, coming in, <coughs> which is really the rectified uh, input sine wave here, uh, then this uh, uh, circuit consisting of inductor, capacitor and this uh, uh, transistor, uh, uh, inductor diode and this uh, transistor is really a boost converter circuit that we have seen earlier. So the, the operation of this boost converter is really to shape this current IL, this current here to be of the waveform shown over here. So if you remove the ripple and talk about this IL with a bar on top, this IL is shown here in the positive half cycle. We would like to shape this IL to be looking like this. In the negative half cycle of the input voltage, we will shape the IL to be looking like this here, right? So if IL were to look this current here uh, of this uh, waveform uh, drawn in red, then of course IS would be a sinusoidal current in phase with the incoming input voltage here, okay? And uh, that is uh, what we would like to do. And since we are using a boost converter here, uh, we have to make sure that this output voltage here is greater than the peak of this incoming voltage here because that is what would appear at the input of this boost converter. So it should be greater than uh, the peak of the incoming AC voltage for this boost converter to work. So <clears throat> uh, we can uh, replace uh, this uh, uh, switching power pole that we have uh, in this uh, boost converter by its average representation as shown in this uh, diagram over here and we can plot uh, uh, various values here. Uh, Vd, we assume it to be a perfect DC at the output here and then uh, Vs waveform is the input. The absolute value of Vs waveform is the input to this boost converter plotted here and uh, the average value of this current ignoring the ripple uh, that will invariably be there, you know, because there is a switching circuit so there will be some ripple, but if you average that out, then that current is shown as well here. And uh, as you can see here, this is the, the peak of this inductor current, and our control circuit would have to come up with the peak value of this inductor current, okay? But the shape should be exactly like this absolute value of the input voltage like this here. <coughs> so uh, if uh, the output is given, let us say at time T1, could be any time, but let us uh, zero in on this one particular one, uh, any time T1 here. If this is the output voltage, this is the input voltage to the boost converter, then we can calculate what the, the D ratio would be here. So that is done in uh, subsequent slides over here. So once again, uh, we can see the same uh, circuit here and the same waveforms that we saw earlier. And uh, we know that in a boost converter, uh, the, the ratio of these two voltages, this is the output, this is the input, uh, that will be uh, 1 over 1 minus D. Uh, we know that. And from there, 
uh, we can rewrite this equation in this form here and calculate D, the D ratio that is needed uh, uh, at the, any, any instant of time to be expressed by this here, <coughs> okay? So the next question is, uh, what uh, we know we, we would like this to be sinusoidal, recti rectified sine wave like this here, right? So as a consequence, what would this current be, which is flowing through the diode into the output stage? And again, we are neglecting the ripple in it, so it's, uh, it's really the average value uh, expressed by bar on top. When I say average, cycle by cycle average, okay? So we had calculated earlier that uh, this one minus D is given by this expression, and uh, IL, uh, we, would shape, we are shaping it to be like this here. Then uh, looking at this uh, circuit over here, we can see that uh, the current here, ID, is uh, equal to the product of this times this because the ampere turns are the same on both sides. So from here you can see if you plug in the value for 1 minus D from here and IL from here, we get uh, this expression here, okay? And here uh, what we see is we have a product of uh, absolute value of sine omega T as and absolute value of sine omega T. And we can show that uh, sine omega T absolute value to the square is equal to, well, that is shown here, uh, and this is equal to, as we'll see in the next slide here, uh, so this is what we had seen in the previous slide, but uh, this quantity here, without any approximation, is equal to sine square omega t, okay? There's no approximation there, okay? so. This uh, diode current neglecting its ripple is given by this expression, and sine square omega t can be written as one half minus one half cosine two omega t here. <coughs> so the the current that uh, flows through the diode has this uh, DC component here. It depends upon the the circuit conditions uh, in which we are operating. Uh, everything would be in steady state DC. And uh, uh, then in addition, we have a second harmonic component due to this uh, cosine two omega t here, okay? So, you know, you have some incoming frequency uh, associated with the incoming uh, voltage and uh, the current that flows into the output stage, uh, which consists of this capacitor and equivalent resistance here, this current, is consisting of a DC component as well as this second harmonic component here. So that is what is shown on this slide. And uh, here we can make a slight uh, approximation and say that of course there's no DC current that can flow through the capacitor. So the DC component of this flows through the resistor over here. But uh, we can also say that uh, the second harmonic component of this current flows as an approximation, of course, entirely through the capacitor. And the rationale is that the impedance of this capacitor, the second harmonic frequency, is uh, much smaller than this resistance here. So if you can make that approximation, then uh, knowing that this uh, second harmonic component uh, in this current ID uh, and this diode current is given by this, uh, we can calculate the, the, the ripple at the second harmonic frequency in the capacitor voltage to be given by this expression over here. So the next thing we should, uh, we should do is talk about how we would design the, the controller in order to shape this current, IL, uh, given a certain load on on this circuit here, represented by this equivalent resistance over here. <coughs> so uh, what we'll do is we will uh, uh, select some reference voltage uh, to which uh, we will hold this output DC here. So let's call this reference voltage by 
in this VD asterisk over here and uh, and that has to be greater than uh, the peak of the incoming voltage. So if the peak of the incoming voltage is let's say 170 volts, you may wish to pick uh, some value 225 or something like that uh, just to be on the safe side, but certainly greater than whatever is the peak of this incoming voltage. So uh, in this circuit, we will uh, measure the output voltage, which is being measured here and uh, is being compared with this reference value that we have picked. And the error between these two goes to this voltage controller, which uh, needs to be designed. And the out output of this is the, the peak value of the inductor current that we would like here. Okay, so that's uh, how we come up with what this peak value of the inductor current ought to be. And then we, so in steady state, uh, this will be some uh, DC value, and we multiply that with uh, the absolute value of sine omega t. So that's just a template, you know, how uh, this voltage is varying, and the absolute value of that uh, is, uh, we can think of as a template. We multiply the two, and that gives us what the, uh, the, de the desired current would be that should flow through this inductor. So that's the reference current, and we compare that reference current with the actual measured current here, and the difference between these two then would uh, act on this current controller that gives the control voltage, which is compared by, with uh, this, uh, compared with uh, uh, sawtooth waveform, a ramp waveform, and that determines the switching signal of this transistor over here. Okay, so uh, in this way, I need to design the current controller, and this is really an average current mode control here. And uh, <coughs> then we need to uh, design this uh, voltage controller over here. So if we are able to do that, uh, we can make this uh, uh, power factor correction uh, circuit work. So that brings us to the summary. Uh, where we have looked at the basic principle behind uh, single phase uh, power factor correction circuits, and we have seen the need for the controller and uh, the basic principles. <laughs>